this one, Durham professional cricketer Liam Travaskis gives you some tips on how to bowl left arm spin in cricket. Let's go. Naturally for me, it would be, so it will start with the red side as the shiny side, and then that would be facing out in to, for myself. Uh, it would be two fingers, and once again for me, I've got quite a, my hands aren't that big, but I've got quite a wide grip in terms of the distance. Uh, I've had a lot of conversation around sort of width of, width of finger, and I had a bit, I went to India, sort of people getting a bit more, a bit narrower, Main thing for me would be sort of strong, comfortable grip for yourself. Trying to keep the ball off your palm and not have your thumb on the ball. And then the main thing is your index finger is your spinning finger. So when the ball comes out, the ball's going to come over. You can see that, try your hand out of the way for you. So you've got the, and the ball will come over and round. And that'll provide sort of the, sort of the arc you want in. So you're trying to recreate the arc of the ball in your hands to the arc of the ball coming down to the uh, down to the batsman. And then in terms of how you hold the ball, I'd go, so you've seen there, I've gone across the seam. So that allows the ball to come out and you'll see it would drift a little bit easier. And you're sort of trying to get a 45 degree for myself, going away from the right-hander, trying to get 45 degrees to first slip, sort of middle of first slip. So that'll be a main, one of the main things, but you can also mess around with that. So, so you can hold it a little bit differently. And then you get a little bit more traction off the seam with your spinning finger. Uh, that might react differently off the pitch. You never know what's going to really happen uh, in terms of trying to outwit the batsman and what's going to happen. You don't really know so how they're meant to know. So that'll be one thing. So you can, like that, you can be over the middle like that. So that'd be sort of the classic grip would be would be two fingers and your yeah, index fingers, your spinning finger. So we'll go back to the, so you've taken your grip and we've got a stock delivery for me as a sole left arm bowler would be just over the ball and the cricket ball come over your index finger and start going down the pitch and it'll end up hopefully spinning towards first slip if you're going to a right hander. So all that means is your wrist is quite a pivotal part in it. So you don't want to be locked up. You need to have quite, not too fluid, but you need to have a bit of movement in your wrist um, in terms of your stock delivery. But on top of that, you can bowl the same ball from many different positions. So you can have sort of your normal stock. You can open your wrist up a little bit, which will make the trajectory a little bit flatter. It might not bounce as much. Um, something that I don't particularly have, my hands aren't big enough or my wrist isn't quite as flexible as sort of a top spinner. So you cock it a little bit more and instead of the seam coming down like this to the batsman, you'd end up sort of being a little bit more over the top, you might get a little bit more overspin. Um, so that would sort of be your stock, your stock delivery. You can change around the angle of your wrist, angle of your arm into a year, sort of 12 o'clock, a year 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, you can be all the way down. There's a few, few bowlers that are sort of a bit like Malinga style that have come right down to the uh, to the extreme of 90 degrees. Um, that'll be your stock delivery. And then you change where your wrist is, uh, where your hand is, how you release the ball um, to, to make that a, a difference. But I wouldn't describe it as a different ball. It would be a different angle or release point. Take the same grip, so an arm ball. So an arm ball for me would hopefully I'd hold it in the same way, so I'd have the shiny side here. It'd hopefully swing into the right-hander and it'd be a little bit fat, touch touch faster, a little bit flatter in trajectory and it'd be basically like left arm in swing from round the wicket. So all that changes for me then is instead of this is what the batsman would see, that's what the batsman would see. So all of you open of your wrist and instead of coming over the ball like that, you'd come round the back of the ball and the last, same with your stop delivery, the last 
bit of your finger to touch the ball would be the top of your index finger. So you'd end up bowling it and you come underneath the ball and the ball would hopefully start traveling down towards the batsman like that. And this being a shiny side, um, it, because it was the regulation swing would be the ball swings away from the shiny side because that travels through the air faster because it's smoother. So that'll run and then it'll come in. People might say an Ashwin ball is uh, a Karen ball. So he's got really big fingers. So what you do with a Karen ball is you'd hit your seam, you'd have this is my middle finger, you'd have your middle finger on top. As you can see, not the most the easiest thing with little hands. Um, and you'd be there like that. And then what changes between this and a normal slow left arm, even with your arm ball, would be that now, like with leg spin, your ring finger becomes a spinning finger in this case. So it'd be a slim, similar wrist position to your arm ball, the way you'd be a bit more open and then it'd be a flick. So you flick it with that finger and then the ball will hopefully start rotating down towards the batsman. It'd be a little bit more of a square spinner um, and then that'll move down towards the batsman, hopefully, hopefully spinning. So in terms of where your arms wanted to be, for myself, um, I've always tried to make sure I've got a strong front arm in terms of using it to pull my backside. So when I say by my backside, I mean working this sort of a, a rocking motion. So instead of being rotating sort of round, you're rotating over, um, a bit like how you want the ball to, to go down. So using your front arm, you wanting that to pull you through. In my opinion, it would be you'd keep it pretty similar in terms of how you'd go about bowling different deliveries. And then what changes for different deliveries would be how the ball is in your hand, where you think it's so if you go back to how you ball on your arm ball, um, a carom ball if you've got one, your stock ball, would be what changes. So it'd be your bowling arm. Um, and then your wrist position, plus as well as sort of your angle of angle of attack, your use of the crease, um, sort of the height of your arm. Someone that would be a really good person for you to look at would be someone like uh, Shaki Balhassan in his ability to use, he's not quite as perpendicular as, as some, but his ability to use sort of his arm angle, I think that probably helps from growing up in a subcontinent conditions of working out how to, to dismiss the batsman, but that would be one person to, to look at. But in terms of front arm, I think that's, you want it to be down and towards the batsman like anything with bowling. Um, trying to pull it for me would be a big key would be to try and pull my backside and my, my back arm through in a in a motion it's sort of a pendulum motion so I don't want to be losing it so imagine I'm side on to you I don't want to be losing my front arm over here because then you end up instead you can see already so I've gone from side on to front on and then the only rotation that can now happen is sort of a twisting rotation which for Finger spin isn't what you want. Flight and pace. So something that in terms of professional level would be that I didn't really consider when sort of moving up was the pace that spinners actually ball is quite quick. Um, I think that people can get a, a misconception of, of spin being sort of a slow art and seeing it on the telly and instead of it being 85, 90 miles an hour, you can actually see the ball go up, you can see what's happening. Um, so you're still going to bowl with good good pace and aggression. Another point would be for myself, I'm only 5'10". So for me, when I'm bowling well, the ball, it, no matter what delivery I'm bowling, the ball goes up at some point. It just depends how much the ball does go up. Uh, it changes from format to format and the batsman you're trying to bowl at. But I think the ball, any speed, you're quite lucky if you're able just to ball down and into the pitch. There's a few that have been able to with being quite tall, you can just ball quite flat. Um, for myself, would be how the ball has to go up. Whether that's an actually, it actually happens or whether you just feel like you're getting there. Um, sort of, it's up for interpretation of what you think the ball going up looks like. But you're sort of wanting, so imagine that's me releasing the ball here and the stumps are here. You sort of want a, 
that sort of action. You don't want to be just becoming sort of flat and into. There is there are times to do that, but uh, you don't want to be going flat and into the pitch all the time because it comes quite easy for the batsman to um, sort of just react and play rather than there's a bit of guesswork and there's, there's it's no longer an art. It's sort of just a it's just a reaction. You you bowling you basically bowling seam from running in from eight yards. Run ups a very individual thing. It's a little bit like the grip. There's kind of a way to do it, but there's no like pres prescribed. This is what you need to do. Uh, I think one. So if you look at someone like a uh, Samit Patel, he runs through, through the umpire. So he comes in on an angle, whereas someone like myself or playing for Leicester now, Callum Parkinson, they we run straight. Um, so that'll be two things to consider. Do you do you want to run in on an angle or you run in straight? Would be two of the things. The next thing would be your pace. So I think certain for myself, I've got a little bit of a sort of a bound in. Um, nothing too aggressive, nothing too fast that I'm going to lose my sort of control of where my body is, but nothing too slow that when I get to the crease, I've got no momentum and I'm not bowling. So a little bit to be to akin it to would be in drills, you do standing drills usually, and then you work your way back. So if you don't have the right momentum for yourself moving into the crease, you may as well be bowling from a standing start. There's a few people that have done that. Someone like uh, Rakeem Cornwall at the moment, he's quite slow into the into the crease, but he's, I think he's about six foot six or something like that. And he's quite, his ability to, to land the ball is, is impressive and he's got a little bit more margin because of his height. Uh, whereas someone a little bit smart, like a, going back to Sam Patel, he's quite, not fast into the crease, but he's got a bit more of a flow because he's a little bit shorter and his momentum then carries him through the, through the crease. I think the run-up needs to put you in an optimal position to bowl. That could be fast, it could be slow. It's a bit like a seamer. So not all seamers, although they are running quickly, there's an optimal pace for you to run in at. Because if you're running too quickly in any bowling style, what needs to happen, so you jump, you gather, everything that needs to happen is going to happen too quickly. And you're going to lose control, especially if you're just starting out, you're going to lose control of where you're where your limbs are and then something sort of that changes in terms of your run up might be the if you're round for me if you round to a right hander then my run up's similar but my the work I have to do to ball the ball isn't quite as strenuous so I can you can cheat a little bit so you're always trying to attack mainly attack middle and off stump off stump so on the angle of running in, so my body needs to go in that direction. Whereas, say if he's born to a left-hander from over the wicket, you have to be a little bit stronger with your front arm and your front side and your alignment on the crease so that you can deliver the ball. So there'll be two things that would uh, would differ. So you need to be run up. It's just getting into going at the right pace to allow you to ball. Some people can go into the game without a plan of what they're wanting to do. So something that I'm quite lucky is that I've got quite a lot of film and footage and there's a lot of knowledge in and around the um, change room that you're able to tap into. So that'll be, I don't think pace, you might ball a touch faster in, in white ball cricket and so you're trying to get out of into overs and out of overs rather than building through a spell and working a batsman out. It's sort of get in, get out. Don't go, for, don't go for as many runs as as, as you can. Uh, but I think a plan would be one of the main things in the change of formats. So it's the red ball stuff, the play sort of develops and you work it out. You change your feel slightly. You think, oh, he's playing this way a certain day. I need to. The pitch will have a big impact on that. So, this is the pace I need to ball. This is the kind of feels that I need to set. It might be. It's not going to go to slip today. I need a ring field. I need everyone in front of the bat. Really, I need to make sure I'm getting hit in the V. Um, but then white ball, you might. 
you'd work out a little bit more in depth and go, well, this person against me strikes at 160. I need to get him off strike because I don't want to be be sort of bearing the brunt of that. And then you think, oh, the other guy, the other end only strikes at 90. When he gets on strike, my field's going to change. My pace might change a little bit. I might make him try and hit me, give him a little bit less to work with. Um, so something for myself would be a change of, so you'd have five men out in out of the power player and someone that you'll see it a lot. The person that gets moved is mid wicket. So you'd either have a mid wicket or you won't. And that'll be, you'd be put to third man usually, would be where he'd be put. So that person for me will get moved or you put him to slip. It's just the periods, another point would be to make that the periods of time you have to attack shorten, but they're still there. So in a T20, you might only attack for two balls, but you still attacked. Whereas in a four day game, you might attack for three overs. So it's the plan of knowing who you're playing, knowing what you're trying to do and going from there. Hopefully you found those great tips useful. If you did, please do smash that like button for me, share the video and subscribe to the channel too. Be sure to also check out the full coaching playlist on my channel. Just tap or click the end screen and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.